Today we're going to check out the TMC2209 Stepper Driver from Big Tree Tech. Smart stepper drivers have really improved things for hobby 3D printing, especially when you look at the old Allegra or TI driver chips. The new driver chips can make your printer a lot quieter, can probably improve your print quality, and they offer a lot of different features that might be useful when you set up your 3D printer. Now as far as Trinamic TMC drivers go, why would you want to choose the 2209? Well, in the recent past, we've had the 2100, the 2130, and the 2208. Well, the 2209 offers a lot of features from those past driver chips, all rolled into one, that you might want to check out. Here's a look at the Big Tree Tech 2209 version 1.2 driver board that we're going to be using today. Now, not every driver board is going to be configured the same, no matter what kind of driver chip it has on it. So today, what we're going to do for the Big Tree Tech board might not be the same from the one you buy from another vendor. Just the driver chips are going to be the same, not the way they're configured to work with the board. From the top of the board, we have our potentiometer where we can adjust the reference voltage to increase the current if we need to. That's for standalone mode. We have our diag pin right here. If you're going to use this on a board that doesn't have direct support for these types of drivers, this is where you would plug in your end stop to use centerless homing. Down below that doesn't have a pin, that's the index pin. And this pin over here is where you can measure the reference voltage from instead of the center of the potentiometer. Down over here, Big Tree Tech has soldered three pins up that you can use. These two can be used for your UART communication. You can use either one depending on which solder pad you have on the back of the board. And this pin down here is the clock pin. And on the bottom of the board, you have solder pads right here where you can set it to spread cycle mode. These are by default in Stealth Chop. That's what we're going to be testing today. And then you have your solder pads right here for your PDN pin, which you select which UART pin you'd like to use. All the information on how you set these up are available on the Big Tree Tech GitHub. Now, why go with the 2209 versus a 2130 or a 2208? Well, the old 2130 had Cool Step install guard. That enables sensorless homing, so you don't need an end stop for X and Y any longer if you get it set up correctly. But it also had Stealth Chop 1, so when you're running in the silent mode, it wasn't quite as powerful as Stealth Chop 2. The 2208 has Stealth Chop 2, but one of the bigger differences between the 2208 and the 2100 series was the UART versus the SPI mode. SPI mode on the 2100 series was a little bit harder to set up than the UART mode on the 2208 and 2209. But the 2208 didn't have stall guard, so you can't do the centerless homing, so you have to keep your in stops. And if you're not confused by now, the 2209 has all of those features combined. You have stall guard 4, you have UART mode, you have all the centerless homing features, and you also have a lower resistance output driver, so you should be able to run it at a higher current, and it should stay cooler than the 2208. They will operate in what's called standalone mode if you get them set up correctly. Basically, that's a direct swap out for something like an A4988. Always check the orientation, of course, but you can plug those in and use Stealth Chop right out of the box, so it will quiet down your 3D printer, because that's usually the default mode they're going to be in. But if you want to use the other features, you're going to have to set them up to be in UART mode. So you're going to need some jumpers to be able to communicate with your printer's main board. And that's for the UART pins and the diag pin. That will get you centerless homing, and you can control the current. That's on most printer boards. But if you have something like an SKR 1.3 board, that has all of it baked in. You just have to move the jumpers around to be able to control these things. And it makes the install so much easier. That's one of the main reasons why I would suggest you get an SKR board. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll show you how to get everything set up on an SKR 1.3. So here's our SKR 1.3 main board. By default, all the jumpers on these boards usually come in place. I have moved a couple of these around. But the first thing you want to do if you're going to install some smart drivers, or any driver, is probably just remove all these jumpers, then put back the ones that you need. The only one that you have to keep is this one right here. This tells the board whether it can be powered with power in or the USB. You just want to leave that in place, but you can remove all the other ones. And for the standalone installs for a 2208 or a 2209, all you need are these two jumpers here. That's MS0 and MS1. All the other ones can stay off and it will operate in standalone mode. Then you can adjust the reference voltage or the current with the trim pot. So for our install today, we're going to use UART mode on all four of our drivers. 
So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these, and I'll show you which ones you need. All the default jumpers are off. Don't forget these over here. This is how you'll set centralized homing. These go to the diag pins. So on the SKR board, pretty much all we need are these red ones here for UART mode. All the other ones will stay off. So down here, we'll put this one on for X, this one for Y, this one for Z, and this one for E0, extruder 1. Now remember, if you want to use two Z motors, you can either use some sort of breakout cable. The 2209 should handle that just fine. Or you can use E1 if you set that up in the firmware. Now we definitely want to use sensorless homing because we want to check out that feature. If you want to do that for X and Y, we're just going to jump these two pins right here. This one, we'll jump it for X. And the one right next to it, you can jump that one for Y. This alleviates the need for us to hook up that diag pin so we can get stats off of it for sensorless homing. And for most 2209s, you're going to want to install it just like this in the socket. On the SKR 1.3 board, the potentiometer will be towards the power input. They are marked on the top, enable, direction, ground. Just make sure those are lined up the same as on your board. If you flip your SKR board over, you can see that they are marked to make sure that you get those drivers lined up. Enable pins right here, direction, ground. So one of the nice features about these big tree tech drivers is they have a really nice size pad right here. This is right over the chip on the other side where you can put a really large heat sink. You do want to keep these as cool as possible, although the 2209 is going to handle the heat a lot better than the other chips. And with this version, they include this really cool blue heat sink to go on top, just like that. You might also want to consider some active cooling on these drivers. They might still get a bit warm depending on what motors you use and how you're using them. As always, the higher the current, the hotter these drivers are going to get. But in most situations, you can probably get the current down low enough where these will run just fine with a heat sink on them. My Y driver's installed. My Z motor's installed. Again, for this install of this board, I'm going to be using a Y cable that's set up parallel. It's going to drive two motors, but it should be able to handle it just fine and my extruder drivers installed. Now we should be all set. We can get into the configuration and set these up so we can work with sensorless homing and UART mode. So the 2209 drivers are now installed in the printer and they're set to use UART mode. I have also covered up those two diag pins for X and Y so I can use sensorless homing. I also removed the wires for the X and Y end stop pins so I don't have to use those switches any longer. I didn't remove the switches yet. They're still there, but this should get us through this testing. So now we're going to jump into Marlin and get the 2209 set up. So we're in VS Code and Configuration.h. This Marlin is set up for 2208 drivers already. You can see that in a couple of the other videos that I've done. Links in the description. So 2209s shouldn't be that different from the 2208. But I will go over some things that might be different if you're coming from something like an A4988. The directions, for instance. So at the top of configuration.h, the first thing we're going to come to is the serial settings. So something like the SKR 1.3 board, the serial settings are going to be somewhat important. On the serial bus, I currently have a touchscreen installed, and now I have UART drivers installed on this board. So for the first serial port, the USB connection, I'm going to leave that one set to zero. And then for the secondary serial port, I'm going to uncomment that. I'm going to set it to negative one. This will allow us to use the USB emulated serial port, so we're going to have an easier time connecting to the board now that we have a couple of different devices on that bus. I'm also leaving the baud rate at 115200 because that's what my touchscreen likes. We are on the Big 3 Tech SKR 1.3 mainboard. The next thing we come down to is end stop pull-ups. Just make sure those are defined. It is set defined by default, but we might need those to use the sensorless homing on the 2209. This line right here is all you should have to uncomment to use them. Next up, we have end stop inverting. To use centerless homing for your X and Y, you're going to want both of these set to false. And then we come down to the driver settings. I currently have some 2208s in standalone mode installed. I have tested 2208 UART mode and standalone. We just need to switch these to 2209. So we'll just take this 2208 standalone and we'll make it 2209. And we want this for all X, Y, Z, and extruder 0. Just like that. And we can keep scrolling. And the only other thing that you might need to look at in configuration.h is the motor direction. 
2208s and 2209s are going to both go in the same direction, so I shouldn't have to change anything. But if you're coming from an A4988 or a DRV8825, you might have to switch the direction. And this is where you do it right here. Just change them from true or false back and forth to change which way the motor is going to turn. If you're doing this new from scratch, you might have to do some testing to figure out which way is which, but this is how you change them back and forth. And just a quick note in configuration.h, if you don't have EEPROM enabled, you might want to go ahead and uncomment this line because it's going to make it a little easier to diagnose problems if you have it while you're setting up your 2209. So now on to configuration underscore adv.h. So the first thing we're going to want to do is check out the TMC driver settings. So let's just do a find on TMC. And a couple searches down, we'll have this section TMC. The first one is for the 2600 series. Then we come to the TMC Smart section. This is where we need to start looking at things. The first section is for a lot of things that use the SPI mode. We're using UART, so a lot of these aren't going to apply. But we'll go down to if has trinamic. So the stock current setting at 800 for a 2209 seems to run just fine for me. It does run quite a bit cooler than a 2130 or even a 2208, and I haven't had any problems running them at 800. Now you can change the current for the driver that it uses all the time and when it does sensorless homing. So you might want to reduce the sensorless homing current a little bit so it crashes a little lighter than usual, but I haven't had any issues with the stock settings, so I'll just leave that. Micro steps, you can set these up to 256 on a 2209. For today, I'm just going to leave it at 16, but you can increase that quite a bit if you wish. And I'm going to leave all these settings the same for all of my drivers, X, Y, Z, and E0. We're just going to go with the default. For the most part, you want to reduce the current as much as you can without getting skip steps. This will reduce the load on the driver as well as the temperature and the temperature of the staffer motor. So when you're tuning in the right current setting, drop it down as low as you think you can get away with without skipping steps, and then increase it if you start to skip. If you're driving two Z motors like I am with one driver, it's going to have to be a little bit higher. And on some extruders, especially direct drive geared one to one, it might have to be a little higher there as well. We're going to skip the SPI settings because that doesn't apply for these drivers. Here's the hardware serial port settings for the 2209. We don't need to do that because we have the SKR 1.3. And then we come down to the Stealth Chop setting. Stealth Chop is enabled by default, and that's the setting I prefer to use because it's a lot quieter than Spread Cycle. So I'm just going to leave Stealth Chop enabled. If you're using the Spread Cycle setting, you can adjust the chopper time, 12 volt, 24 volt. We are using 12 volt today. Monitor trinamic drivers for error conditions. I highly recommend that you uncomment this. We are on a 32-bit board, so memory shouldn't be an issue. And here are all the commands you can use to get information from your drivers. We'll look at those more in a second. In this section, you can use hybrid mode. That'll switch in between stealth chop and spread cycle if demands increase. We're going to leave that off because I always want to use stealth chop. And then we come down to the section for stall guard. This is what allows us to use sensorless homing. On the 2209, the highest sensitivity setting for stall guard is 255, the lowest is zero. We will have to adjust that just to make sure there aren't any false positives while printing. An important note down here on the 2209, you can only use sensorless homing if stealth chop is enabled. So let's go ahead and uncomment sensorless homing. There is somewhat of an interesting feature right here where you can use stall guard 2 as a probe for your bed, so you wouldn't need the probe on Z. I'm not going to check this out right now, but it might be something we want to check out in the future. That's a pretty cool feature. Scroll down a bit more, we're going to enable TMC debug so we can see what's going on with the driver. And there's only one more setting that I want to change, and that's home bump. So let's search for bump. When you're using sensorless homing, you don't want it to bump more than once. That can confuse it sometimes. So we're just going to set home bump for X to 0 and Y to 0. And that should be all the settings we need to change to get our 2209s up and running. I just turned the power of the printer on. And I wanted to show you this. It does read the SD card automatically, and it pops up this window. You can see the firmware.cur, or current, is set. That means the bin file for the firmware has already been loaded on this printer, and it's made a backup. So back to VS Code, I like to set my environment manually, so I've selected LPC 1768, and I can just hit Upload. But you can also code this in your .ini file if you want to. That will make it static. I use a lot of different boards, so I just select it every time. But you can make that permanent if you wish. Now the upload is completed successfully. And just to show you this, I'm going to power the printer off, power it back on. And when the computer reads the SD card, we now have a firmware.current file. 
but it's updated for the date and time so you know that it's loaded the new firmware file. You always have to power off and power on to get it to reload that firmware. Now we're ready to test. Let's jump into Pronterface. I'm on COM7. I'm at an 11.5200 baud rate. I can go ahead and hit connect. And the first thing that I like to do with any board changes like this, I want to make sure all the motors are moving correctly. So let's go up in Z, 10. We're moving up. That's good. Let's go X10 to the right. We're good there. Y10 forward. We're good there. Let's go ahead and heat up. While it's heating, let's go ahead and do an M503. You can see the current settings for our drivers. With an M906, you can adjust the current of those drivers. Ours are all set to 800. You can set your stall guard threshold with M914. The default is 8 for both X and Y. I'll show you that in the firmware here in a second because we're going to have to make adjustments. And then we have our M569 settings. This actually allows you to adjust stealth chop or spread cycle on the fly. If you see them set to 1, that means it's stealth chop mode. If you see them set to 0, that's spread cycle. But let's say you want to set the extruder to spread cycle. You can look at them with M569. And then you can switch it with M569S0, E0. We'll take a look at them again. Now we have our extruder motor set to spread cycle. To change it back, we can just switch it to S1, E0. Take another look. Stealth chop. That's a pretty handy feature to have. So now we're up to temp. I just wanted to do that to make sure the extruder is turning in the right direction, and it is. So now we can turn these off, and let's talk about sensorless homing. If we do M914, this is going to let us view our sensitivity settings for X and Y for using sensorless homing. Again, default is 8. I can tell you right now, 8 is not high enough for a 2209. And here's how you tell. Warning, this will be annoying. We'll go ahead and hit home on X. And we get crashing. Homing will fail. We'll have to switch the printer off and back on. And this M914 command becomes very handy in this case. First thing I want to do is get level set and bring in all the default settings, M502. And then I'll save them with M500, just to make sure there's nothing weird in EEPROM versus what's in the firmware. And you can just play around with this M914 command to adjust the homing sensitivity. Pretty much all you're going to do is increase it until the crashing stops. You don't want to set it any higher than you have to, because that might introduce unpredictability while you're printing. You might get a false positive. But on the printers that I've set up 2209s, it does have to be pretty high, I've found. It's going to be different printer to printer. But for mine, I'm going to do M914, X60, Y60. Any lower than that, I still get crashing. And during prints, I don't seem to be getting any false positives. So we'll enter that command, M914 again. They're both set to 60, M500 to save. Now we'll move X over a bit, and we'll give the homing another try. No more crashing. Let's go ahead and do home all. Everything home successfully, and we should now be all set to use sensorless homing. And after you have your sensorless homing dialed in like you want it, everything's set correctly, you can come back into VS Code and update Marlin permanently. So we'll just set X to 60 and Y to 60. You can go ahead and re-upload or just save it for your next upload. And with any change, we definitely want to try a test print to make sure we don't have any false positives on our sensorless homing. Auto leveling has started. Looks like it's working successfully. And the Benji's off and printing. No issues at all. Pretty much exactly the same as the 2208s I just removed. Only now we can use the sensorless homing. And just one more thing before we go. If you have these smart drivers installed, you can always use your M122 command to check the status of the drivers in case you're having issues. This is a great place to start if you're having problems connecting to the drivers. This is going to test your connections. You can see they're all okay down here. And it will give you some error stats right here. If you have mostly zeros and Cs, you should be good to go. You have to have your debug setting uncommented in Marlin to use this, but it has become increasingly more valuable as Marlin has been developed. Definitely check this out. And there it is, TMC2209 stepper drivers using sensorless homing installed on our SKR 1.3 mainboard. 
Again, the SKR 1.3 makes this install really simple. That's one of the biggest advantages of using this board, as well as its price point. You don't have to mess with all the jumper wires and the configuration you would have to on a lot of the other boards. Although it will still work, it's going to be a lot more trouble. Now, if you have 2130s or 2208s already, should you jump up to the 2209? Well, if you have the 2130 and you do use centerless homing, I definitely think you should. The configuration is a lot simpler than it is on a 2130, and quite the upgrade. Now, if you have a 2208 and you don't need centerless homing, there's really not that big of a benefit to going to the 2209. It does have a little lower resistance, so it can handle some more current, so you might be able to get some more torque out of it, but that's going to be specific to every motor and every printer. The 2208 is probably still good enough. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.